this one is the natural nail and right here we have a nail bed so this is the pink part that is usually pink color and it's connected with the skin well on the screen you can't really tell the difference but this part is the free edge it's usually white or milky, sometimes clear, and this part is not connected to the skin anymore, so we can file and shape it as long as we want. Here we have a cuticle line. Some people have cuticles that you can actually see them. There's, you know, lots of skins. Some people don't really have one or it's very, very tiny and thin, those lucky ones. So regardless of that, we all have the cuticle line. And also we have sidewalls. Those are two lines on both sides. And not always they're like this picture. They're not perfectly straight usually. Sometimes they can be wide, sometimes they can be uneven, but we all have at least two. Let's talk about electric nail drills. These are just uh, two names that are sold worldwide because the brands that I use, they're mostly only in Russia or Ukraine. So the one is Mini Pro by Cupa and another one is Pro Power 35K and this website medical.com they actually have a very good electric nail files. Um, they're not cheap but they're definitely they have enough power and you will not have any problems when doing pedicure, infills, manicure, just anything you want. Because uh, the most important thing is not only the speed, which most people think, they just look, okay, 30, 35,000 rotations per minute, but that's just the speed. We also need to have input, enough input power. Uh, besides, you need to have a forward and reverse mode in your drill bit, because for manicure, we could work only in one direction, but that's pretty tricky. We will need to move a lot. And you know, some clients, their hands, they're not too flexible. So it is better if you have at least forward and reverse mode. And I personally really like when this wire is straight because sometimes they're curved. And to me personally, it's so not comfortable because everything on the table starts falling. You know, with this one, you can even, you know, like on myself, sometimes I work while I stand. But this is just an option, right? This doesn't have to do anything with the power. So you need to look at input power, which should be between 30 and 60 watt to reverse and forward mode. And also, I think all I hope all electric nail files, even the most cheap ones, have it, but they need to have this standard slot for drill bits. Well, I think most of them do. Is Medical also ProMed? That's a great question. All I know is on their website, the products, they are reliable. Um, I, well, this is not an ad. I don't even know these guys. So unfortunately, I cannot answer this question if this is the same company or not. I just tried. Uh, their uh, drill and, and it's good. Well, let's talk about drill bits and I want to show you one picture. I used to have the red ones but I couldn't find it. Maybe I just threw it away uh, because you should never use these ones. You probably seen these sets on um, Chinese websites. Sometimes they're sold together with the electric nail file and most of the times the electric nail file itself is good but for some reason it comes together with this set and I don't have anything against the sand bands but uh, the, all, uh, the diamond beads that you can see if you um, take a closer look at them you will see that these grains they're very uneven. Some of them are small, some of them are big meaning when you will try to file something they will scratch the surface instead. So these ones are not good. Some of my students have had them for the live class. I tried them and it's just not possible to do anything with them no matter how, how hard you try. So good quality drill bit, if you take a look at them, they usually have the relatively same size of the grains. So if you take a look at it, it doesn't mean that it's not okay if they have some particles, they should have them, but they should not be, um, they should not be too much difference between them. You know what I'm saying? So they cannot have this, you know, really sharp edges and then the next grain is like 10 times 
smaller. Let's talk about abrasive marks. So abrasive marks are lines that are located right here on the bit and by having them the manufacturer is showing us what is um, whether this bit is coarse or not. Two black abrasive marks meaning means it's super coarse. Okay, that's the most coarse bead you will ever get. Next one is black. Um, you can see it on my presentation now. So unfortunately, I don't have it with me with one black abrasive mark. Then we have green, blue, red, Yellow, so if you notice, I'm using different, um, different shapes, different sizes now. Well, it's actually not easy with your nails to, to take the one that you need right away. Then we have yellow, and the last one will be white. So the only one I don't have today here with me is black, that's missing right here. Okay, so that means this one is coarse. Next one, black, um, green, is also coarse but softer than the previous one. Blue is medium coarse, red, medium fine, uh, and yellow and white, they're pretty fine as well. So if you will ever buy, let's say, red abrasive mark and blue abrasive mark by different manufacturers, um, you just will know that uh, this one is softer, this one is more coarse. But sometimes it happens that you buy blue from one manufacturer and then you buy another blue bead from somebody else. And even though they're both blue, um, well, it doesn't look very blue in the camera, right? Well, it is <laughs> blue. They might be different, right? That because it's like regular files, right? Have you ever noticed that you buy 180 grit from one supplier and then you notice that this 180 grit is different from this another file that you recently had, uh, the 180? The same thing here. It depends on the quality of the material. It depends on the technology that they use. So all you need to know is, so let's say yellow is softer than blue. White is softer than green, right? So they always come from soft two cores, they come in this direction and that's it. But within different brands, they also may differ. What kind of materials do um, suppliers use to create drill bits? Well, first one is carbide. Carbide bits, they always have flutes on them. So basically they work like peelers. Uh, so they rotate and they peel the layers of the product or of the nail or even sometimes of the skin. Here we have red. They have different shape, different abrasive, but they all carbide, okay? Also we have diamonds. Diamonds are the ones that, I think that's why they're called like this. They actually shine a little bit. So they look like a little metallic sand. They also have different shapes, different abrasive marks and most commonly used in a manicure. So which materials also do you know? We also have different kinds of ceramic. Sometimes it looks like this. Sometimes it looks like carbide, but is made from ceramic. We also have different rubber buffing beads. Um, also, there are different sand beads that look like the actual file just in the shape of the bit and they have this rubber mandrel that works as the base and this one is like I think it's chamois buffer or silk so it's just for buffing the surface together with the oil or special polishing cream so we have many different kinds sizes and shapes but all you need to know for now is what kind of materials can you safely use to do Manicure and word manicure means sometimes we just call anything 
whatever is done to our nails is manicure. But today we will be calling manicure only the cuticle and skin care and natural nail shaping, like overall service. So for, for manicure, this is materials that we will need. So you can see that I crossed down the carbide and I left all the rest of them. So the most frequently used will be diamond beads, sometimes ceramic, uh, sometimes sand beads, buffed chemis and rubber beads will be mostly used for buffing and polishing the surface, which is mostly popular only among people who do not wear any enhancements, just they want their natural nails. So that means I, you should not use carbide beads, even though they're very commonly used in pedicures, um, in when we are filing acrylic or gel. And I know that some people still use them and I've seen it as well. But my personal opinion is that in some cases, let's say men's manicure or hyperkeratosis, sometimes we could use them, but you need to have a really good qualification for that. You really need to understand what you're doing. Like, for instance, I do not use this. I do not do it because I don't have any medical background. So I only use diamond beads the manicure itself and sometimes ceramic and sand beads as well. Do you prefer diamond or ceramic beads? Well, it depends. There's no such thing uh, in, uh, for this one like prefer. It depends on what I'm going to do because ceramic, they're mostly soft. So if I'm working with sensitive skin, uh, with very thin skin or uh, hyperhidrosis, like excessive moisture skin, I use uh, ceramic for cuticles um, and diamond beads for the rest. But like 80% of the beads I use for manicure are diamonds. But sometimes I also use ceramic and sand bands because for some cases we need to use them.